Well, hi, everyone, and welcome back. This is the Brad Free Report for Friday, July 20th. It is summertime, and you know what that means. Del Mar opened on Wednesday. Saratoga opens on Friday. We're going to keep it close to home today. Talk more about Del Mar. This is the summer, and you know what happens in summer. Two-year-olds begin to emerge. Before you begin to attack the Del Mar summer meet, I hope that you have already gone out and purchased a copy of the 2018 Del Mar Players Guide. We spent a lot of time putting this together, and I hope you enjoy some of the information that is included. We have an entire meet preview, trainer profiles from Steve Anderson, charts, statistics, trainer stats, jockey stats. Take a look at the Del Mar Players Guide, the 2018 Del Mar Players Guide. I think you're going to find it worthwhile. And included in the Del Mar Players Guide is a relatively long piece that devotes, at least partially, to the Del Mar Wagering Menu. The Del Mar Wagering Menu has expanded this year. They added a pick five. They added a pick four. We have win, play, show, parlays. Let's take a look at a chart of the entire, well, of the primary wagers this summer at Del Mar. It's the place pick all starts off in race number one. This is a novelty type of wager. Del Mar handled more than $16 million on opening day Wednesday, 38,000 of that. Only 38,000 was bet into the place pick all. It's a novelty wager. It's just for the sake of action. The early pick five is in theory and in practice, the most cost-effective cost efficient wager offered at Del Mar. The takeout is only 14%. It's the least expensive wager on the menu. It's the best bet. It paid $1,000 on Wednesday. That was with three favorites, one second choice, and one crazy long shot that paid $20. Three favorites, a second choice, and a $20 long shot. The 50 cent pick five on opening day paid a lot more than $1,000. The early pick four is a new wager. The takeout rate is relatively high. It's 23.68%. And it was kind of interesting to take a look at the difference in payoffs between the pick five and the pick four. The pick five, I, t I said it paid over $1,000. The pick four on opening day, which encompassed races two through four, it paid less than $200. So the pick five paid five times as much. And to get that payoff, all you had to do was come up with the winner of race number one. It was the favorite, Doug O'Neill, the first of his four winners. So even though, well, there's two reasons why the pick five is a better wager, at least was on opening day, the 14% takeout. And for some reason, I think people are a little skeptical or a little afraid to bet the pick five. I'm not sure about that. It handled more than $900,000. Maybe I should rephrase that. But the point is this, the pick five is a terrific wager. Pick four, maybe not so much. As for the pick six, you know where I stand on the jackpot style wager. I'm not going to beat it racetracks uh, over the head with it. You know where I stand. Um, I think it's a mistake. The late pick five is new to the wagering menu. That's on the last five races of the day. We also have the late pick four, rolling doubles, rolling pick threes. There is a lot to choose from. Exactas, trifectas, supers, win, place, and show. And my question to you, the viewer, is this. Do you know what your plan is before you begin wagering? Now, maybe you're a pick five player every single day, no matter what. But if you're an occasional player, do you know what your strategy is going into the race? There's a lot of noise out there, a lot of experts telling you, you should bet this, you should bet that. My advice, tune out the noise and figure out what you do best. I want to throw a quote up on the screen, and it was from a letter that was written to me more than 20 years ago by a horse player named Sal Raguso. Now, this is not a, a, it's not a great pearl of wisdom. I mean, I think it's a great pearl of wisdom, but it doesn't rival Confucius or anything like that. And what Sal Raguso said was this, finding the truth at the racetrack must come from within ourselves. Someone else's truth will never work for you. Each of us must find his own version of the truth. My point is this, wagering strategy and philosophy is a, is a very individual, it's an individual, what am I trying to say? It's, it's a personal choice is what it is. So figure out what you do best. Don't, 
do something just because I said you should bet the pick three or pick four or pick five. Yeah, I think the single ticket jackpot pick six is not a good bet. You might disagree for good reasons. My point is this. Make your own decisions when it comes to wagering style. We're going to talk more about wagering philosophy, theory, strategies as the summer unfolds. But I just wanted to show you the pick the wagering menu at Del Mar, which has expanded a lot. Okay, let's get into some quick handicapping. The Saturday card, it's a good card. And three races in particular, the grade two San Diego, the grade two San Clemente, and a maiden race, races seven, eight, and nine. Race number seven on Saturday at Del Mar is the grade two San Diego handicap. And if the best horse wins, well, it'll be Accelerate winning the race at seven to five. Now, I expected there to be several scratches out of this race, and I still do. But there might be, number one, Catalina Cruiser. You've probably heard me talk about this horse. He's lightly raced. He's two for two. I expected him to scratch on Saturday and run on Sunday. Well, the race on Sunday that he was expected to run and did not fill, there's an outside chance that this two for two Colt stays in the San Diego. And if he does, all bets are off with regards to the horse I'm going to talk about in just a second. Accelerate is the best horse in the race. He won this race by the length of the grandstand last year. Remember what happened last year in this race? Arrogate was one to nine. He finished fourth. Here's the show payoffs last year. This was one of my best scores of the summer in the show pool. $22, $67, and $38. I didn't expect to make a score in that race, but sometimes when the show pools are lopsided, you just take the contrary approach. I'm taking the contrary approach here. I, ex I respect Accelerate, but there's an up-and-comer in this race. His name is 235, and trainer Richard Baltus believes that this guy has improved because he has stretched him out. He was claimed for $25,000 in January, and in his four next four starts, three of those four starts were wins, including his most recent effort. Let's take a look, roll the tape of this two other than crusher. This was June 17th at Santa Anita and 235 won by more than four lengths. He earned a 104 buyer speed figure. This was a powerful performance by a four-year-old gelding who is so good right now, it is absolutely scary. And he reminds me and also Richard Baltus, his trainer, of a horse that Baltus trained in the year 2000 by the name of Freedom Crest. Freedom Crest did not improve until he stretched out. He was a former claimer, then he went right up the ladder and he won the grade two San Pasqual and the grade two Goodwood. In fact, in the Goodwood, he defeated Tisnow. Now, I'm not comparing yet 235 to Freedom Crest, but the pattern is similar. We're going to find out a lot about 235 on Saturday in the San Diego. He carries nine pounds less than Accelerate. And if we can get six to one on 235, I'll take that price. Not sure we're going to get it because it's kind of an obvious speed figure play. And who knows if he can run two alike. I believe he will. I picked him on top. I picked him to defeat Accelerate. But I'm gonna wait and see what happens with, with regards to the scratches because if Catalina Cruiser is in this race, I respect that horse. Regardless of what happens, Accelerate is the top handicap horse in the state of California right now. Whether he wins or runs second or third or maybe skips the San Diego, he's probably still the horse to beat in the $1 million Pacific Classic a little bit later on this meet. Okay, race number eight on Saturday. Boy, you talk about a wide open turf scramble. A grade two for three-year-old fillies at a mile on turf and a big field entered this race, a field of 14. Ollie's candy is severely compromised from the outside post. He's, she's six to one. She's three for three. She won the Summertime Oaks last time out. Moving to grass, she's by candy ride. Grass should be okay. I don't think she can overcome that outside draw. I could be wrong. So Ollie's candy has yet to make a mistake. She's six to one. The favorite is number two, Miss Bad Behavior at nine to two. Runner up in the grade three Providencia last time out. And another contender is by the name of Animosity, runner up in the grade two. Honeymoon. The horse that I like is down on the inside. Her name is Rockin' Ready. Five starts into her career. One win and four second place finishes. I think the best race of her career was two starts back in a one mile allowance race. She sat off the pace and stormed home to win going away. This is a lightly raced daughter of more than ready. Eight to one is a good price in a wide open race. You can make a case for at least a half dozen of these fillies. I settled on number one Rockin' Ready. 
She can sit. She can finish. This is only career start number six. Her best races are still ahead. Trained by Phil D'Amato, Joe Talamo board. I like number one, rock and ready to win the San Clemente. Race number nine. Okay, we talk about two-year-olds this summer. We've seen some good ones already. In fact, the best two-year-old that we've seen so far, he ran on July 18th. Let's back up a second. The best two-year-old filly that we have seen so far ran on Wednesday at Del Mar. Her name is Brill, trained by Jerry Hollendorfer, a daughter of Medallia Doro. Hollendorfer and Phillies by Medallia Doro, it's a pretty good match. He did the same thing a couple years ago with Songbird, who won her career debut and went on to have an outstanding career. Brill on Wednesday at Del Mar. She kind of bobbled at the break, didn't get away real well. She rallied wide. She swept to the front in deep stretch, one going away with an 88 buyer speed figure. We've talked about her before, Brill. She was no secret. She was odds on. She ran super, and she might be the goods for trainer Jerry Hollendorfer and owner Larry Best. The best two-year-old filly that we have seen so far. The best two-year-old colt that we've seen so far. Another Hollendorfer Best production, and his name was Instagram. By the way, both Brill and Instagram was, were ridden by Drayden Van Dyke who is one of the top up-and-coming jo up jockeys in Southern California, Drayden Van Dyke and Flavian Pratt, along with the veterans. But Pratt and Van Dyke, two outstanding young jockeys, and Van Dyke made no mistakes. On Instagram, he sat chilly, and Instagram drew off to win by 10. We expect to see him in the grade two best pal stakes in early August. So Hollendorfer Best and Van Dyke, they have a couple good ones. The Philly Brill, Winner on Wednesday and the Colt Instagram. Those are the leaders of the group so far. It's early in the season. We have a good two year old maiden race on Saturday, race number nine. I don't know if it'll produce any superstars, but who knows? Hollendorfer, Best, and Van Dyke, they're teaming up again with number 10, Roe Aton, a son of Into Mischief with a series of fast workouts. Outside post is fine. By the way, there wasn't a single gate to wire winner on either dirt or grass on opening day. Roe Aton with a series of fast works, the five to two favorite in this maiden special weight. They're only going five furlongs. Should be tough to beat. Trainer Doug O'Neill starts two in this race. Number eight, Magnificent McCool. I picked second because I know he'll be finishing, but the other O'Neill at 10 to one, number nine, Truck Salesman, by a sire that stands for $3,500, and yet Truck Salesman was purchased for 230000 that's a 65 to one ratio. Divide the sales price by the stud price, 65. What that means is truck salesman, A, probably looks, looks terrific physically and perhaps breezed well for sale. Watch out for truck salesman. He is believed to be quick. I don't think he's gonna be 10 to one, but he's fast. He might win this race if Roayton does not catch him. Okay, in the San Diego on Saturday, I like 235 to spring an upset. I'm curious to see what John Sadler does with Catalina Cruiser and with Accelerate. In the San Clemente, I like the Philly on the rail, rock and ready. And in the maiden race, number nine, Roe Aton, first time starter trained by Hollander for the horse to beat. If you want to send along any comments with regards to this video or a question that you might want me to answer next week on ne next week's video, send it to bfree -E at drf.com. Be free at drf.com, B-F-R-E-E -E at drf.com. We'll be happy to answer all questions. That's a wrap for the Brad Free Report for this week. I'll see you next time.